Good afternoon. Hope you're having a great day. Today in Israel is the wedding of my first cousin's son, Tvir. And Tvir and his wife, they are just finished the chuppah now. Tvir and his wife were supposed to get married the week after October 7th. A big wedding was planned. And then October 7th happened and they were both called up into reserve duty. And they canceled the wedding. They postponed it. And then they got permission from the army to leave for a week now. And decided not to postpone it anymore, but to get married. They're getting married and they're going back to fight for the Jewish people. How remarkable are our brothers and sisters in Israel. You know, there's an anecdote, a story the Chafetz Chaim says that the Rebbe repeated often at Fabring, and about one time when there was a decree in Russia, in the former Soviet Union, that you shouldn't be able to have a Jewish education. And the Rebbe sent a delegation, the Chavetz Chaim sent a delegation of rabbis to go persuade them to allow Jewish education. And they came back, and the Chavetz Chaim asked them, were you successful? And they said, no, we weren't successful. And he said, why? He says, well, because... The language barrier, the communication. We spoke Yiddish, they spoke Russian. It just didn't work. And the Chavetz Chaim looked at them and said like this, Why didn't you faint? If it, you cared so much, if Jewish education was in your kishkes, if that was the most important thing, then you would have fainted. And what he meant to say is, they wouldn't have to see your words. They would feel your expression. They would see your anguish. They would see your pain. And whatever you might not be able to say in words would be translated in feelings. And the Rebbe always repeated this because the Rebbe said that when something hurts you, you scream. It's not about what is it going to accomplish. It's an emotion. And it made me think, because it's interesting, in this week's Torah portion, we read one of the most emotional parts of the Torah where Joseph and Judah have their confrontation which ultimately leads to Joseph revealing himself to his brothers and freeing Benjamin and Shimon and reuniting with all of them. And in the beginning of this week's Torah portion, Judah spills his guts out to Joseph. And he says, Joseph, my father's an old man. He already lost one of his sons. If I don't bring this son back, my father's going to pass. How can I do this to my father? Please let me take my son. And Joseph can't anymore. And he allows him. And he breaks down crying and he tells them he's his brother. But what's interesting is that earlier, in last week's Torah portion, when Joseph and the brothers are speaking the whole time, in middle, when Joseph accuses them of stealing his goblet, the brothers speak to each other. And the Torah tells us that Joseph couldn't understand Ki the interpreter was between them. Officially, Joseph spoke Egyptian. The brothers spoke Hebrew. So when Joseph had an interpreter between them and he was talking back and forth to them and then suddenly the brothers got stressed and they spoke to each other in Hebrew, they thought that Joseph can't understand them because he's an interpreter. They did not know, of course, that Joseph was their brother and Joseph understood Hebrew. So the Torah lets us know that they didn't know because they thought the interpreter was there. But in this week's Torah portion, when Judah and Joseph are talking, it doesn't tell us anything about an interpreter. And the question is, what happened to the interpreter now? And the rabbi says something so profound that it just may be that when Judah spoke with such heart and such emotion, when Judah, Judah was begging for his father, the old man, to have his son back, he didn't need an interpreter. Because whatever he didn't say in his language was felt in his body language, in his pain, in his emotional, heartfelt plea that you didn't need an interpreter. And sometimes, like the, like the Chavetz Chaim told his students, when you mean it, when it's painful to you, when it's sincere, when it's in your kishkes, when it's in your heart, someone gets it even if they can't understand your language. You know, since October 7th, the emotions, the feelings of one Jewish brother to another over the world has been so strong. It's broken through barriers, through languages, through countries, through continents, through whatever you may imagine. That's the power of the Jewish people. And I think today, 
as my cousin's walking his child down to the chuppah, a wedding that was postponed for two months, and knowing that his child and his future daughter-in-law, her child, my, my cousin's the wife, and their child, the future daughter-in-law and son, are going right back to fight for their people. Think about the emotion, think about the feeling and the pride they have and the hardship that comes with it. But we're so strong, we're so resolute. I saw this remarkable story that happened in Israel yesterday or this weekend where there was a soldier that got off from Gaza by surprise and he came home, he called his wife, he said, they let me off for the weekend, I'm coming home. And his wife is so excited, she said, do me a favor, Go into the makolet, go into the store, get me some challah wine, some stuff we need for Shabbos. The guy goes into the store, he picks up all the stuff. He gets onto line, and as he's getting onto line, the guy in front of him sees him. He has his neshek, he has his armor, and he has his uniform. And the guy in front of him says, do me a favor, I'm paying for this guy. And as he says that, the guy in back of the soldier says, one second, no, you can't take him in my mitzvah, I was planning to pay for him. And suddenly the cashier, cashier says, don't worry. I wasn't planning to charge him. I was going to pay for him. That's the love and the power that the Jewish people have had for each other. It's not what you say. It's how you feel. It's the expressions. It's the vibes. It's the love we have for each one another. My cousin, whose son just got married an hour ago, her brother is a TV anchor in Israel on Channel 14. And he sent me this short one-minute clip, which was so moving to me. He's in his uniform. He's a reservist. He's a principal of a school, but he's also a reservist. He's in his uniform holding his rifle, and he's speaking to the camera. And he's saying that wherever every generation we find ourselves in and every moment we live in is a message from God. And he says the fact that I'm able to put on a uniform and carry a gun and protect my people is the greatest merit and honor for me that my parents and my grandparents never had. And I'm so proud of it. I thought when I watched the video, it's a minute video, but I saw the emotion, the heartfelt feeling. Our brothers and sisters are not scared of the long road. They're up to task, they're brave, they're here, they're empathetic for each other. They love their country, they love their people and our people. And that's why we will win. And my dear brothers and sisters who live in America, when our brothers and sisters in Israel could feel our heart, could feel the things we do for them, it gives them the strength to continue to be strong and to be victorious. God bless.